Okay, we're gonna continue our study on the gradient vector function. Okay, now I'm gonna just immediately dive into this and spare the introduction for the last video, or at least preserve the introduction for the last video. Okay, we found out that there's a scalar field we define as del, oh sorry, as phi, x, y, and z, and this will give us a certain value over here. Okay, and we also found out the gradient of phi. There's something called the gradient of phi, and that is written as del phi. Okay, this is the del operator, and del phi gives us the gradient of phi, Sim simply x, y, and z. Okay, and the gradient of phi here, and this is a vector. Okay, so this is a vector over here, this is a scalar over there. And then we introduce the concept of the directional derivative of phi and point P0 in the direction of u written there as this. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to find this value or at least attempt using rules of calculus to kind of find an equation for this. Okay? That means the rate of change of phi and point naught as it travels to as it travels in the direction of u. Okay, so this is how we're gonna do it. We have a point over here, okay? This point over here is P naught. Okay, that means P naught, we have the point P naught over here. Okay, and then let's just write its coordinates as X naught, Y naught, and Z naught over here. Okay, so remember that we're in three-dimensional space and P naught can, in three-dimensional space, can travel in a whole different range of directions, right? So let's just say that it decides to travel in the direction of u, where u is a unit vector, okay? So let's just draw this dotted line over here, okay? So in three-dimensional space, p naught decides to travel in that direction over there, and this direction is parallel to the vector of u, where u is a unit vector. Now, all this we are still keeping in general terms because u, even though it's a unit vector, it can still be any vector, okay? So we move u over there, p naught will just simply travel there. U, u goes there, p naught is traveling over there. So as p naught is traveling from here to here, it will certainly reach a point, correct? And that point would be, let's just say, p at x, y, and z. Okay, does that make sense? So P0 is traveling to P over there. P is denoted by X, Y, Z parallel to the unit vector U. Okay, so what do we know about vectors that are parallel? Well, that means they are scalar multiple of each other. Okay, so we can somehow find a vector from P0 to P. That is simply this, sorry, it is yeah, this minus this, okay? So we are, now we're sticking the I, J, and K components, okay? The I, J, and K components knowing that now we are in three-dimensional space. Okay, so this is what we have. Okay, x take away x naught i plus y take away y naught j plus z take away z naught k it is equal to parallel of u and u is a unit vector so lambda lambda u. Okay? So, I hope that makes sense. Okay, lambda u because it's traveling parallel to u. Now, let's just put in the vectors for u and let's just say unit 1, i plus unit 2, j plus u, 3, k. Okay, so these are the components of u and that is u, 1, 2, and 3. Now, bear in mind again that u1, u2, and u3 really determines the direction of u. When three-dimensional space, you can travel in any direction. So, we write this over here and let's just equate this one so this times this equals to this, that will mean we can equate the respective i, j, and k components, correct? Okay, so let's do that. Equals to lambda u1, y take away y0 is equals to lambda u2, and z take away z0 is equals to lambda u3. Okay, now let's rearrange to write it as this, okay? x naught plus lambda u1, y is equals to y naught plus lambda u2, and z is equals to z naught plus lambda u3. We got x, y, and z. So what does this equation tell us? This equation tells us that if we got p naught de defined by x naught, y naught, and z naught, and we want to find the value of x, y, and z, okay, we can use the value of p naught and the directional, the vector u, the unit vector u to find x, y, and z, all in general terms, okay? Because the value of x 
depends on x0, the starting point, plus a, a scalar multiple of u1, okay? That means we'll do it for the three separate components, and then we get the value of x, y, and z, okay? It's very easy to look about it, okay? It's just basically starting from here, then we go in, in u, and it just times by scalar multiple, as easy as that, okay? So why would I want to do that? Because now, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use the coordinates and put it inside phi, the scalar field phi, because that's what we started out with. So once I get that equation, okay, then I can differentiate with a certain term or with a certain variable inside here. Okay, see whether you can guess it for a minute, okay, and then we'll carry on. Okay, because you see, just like how we do calculus or we do any form of limit, so to speak, we always define a certain equation or with an equation when it's written in its general form. This case, the equation is this one over here, x, y, and z, written in its general form. Why do I say that? Because we got x0, y0, and z0. x0, y0, and z0 can be any value of the point in three-dimensional space. We got u, u1, u2, and u3, which also can be any value to define the unit vector, okay? And we got lambda, which also can be any value to define how far we travel from p0 to that point over there. So, we got this written like that, Okay, and now we can differentiate this to find the directional derivative of u at point phi, as, sorry, the directional derivative of phi at the point p naught as it travels in the direction of u. Okay? Okay, so let's see.